Hey kids, Tavi Rider here with more minecart science. My previous science video was all about minecarts and powered rails on flat ground. This time we'll be seeing how they do going up hills. There's a lot of science to see, so let's get started. With one, two, three, four, five, and six powered rail in a row, we see how high up the slope those minecarts get. Uh, you can see with one powered rail, you don't get very far. With six, you can almost make it up, you can pretty much make it to four altitude, which is not a lot. I mean, when you compare it to a powered, uh, when you compare it to a booster cart, where you could fly up an entire mountainside with a bit of a boost, this is anemic. So this is not really the right way to use powered rail. You have to distribute it throughout your rail infrastructure. So if you can't get very far that way, how many rail do you need? How many powered rail do you need to get up a hillside? So this is a side-by-side -side comparison. I have alternating powered rail, and then two powered rail in a gap, two powered rail, three powered rail in a row and a gap, and then powered rail the whole way up the slope, going up the same distance. So I'm going to start these at the same time, and watch how quickly they each reach the top of the slope. You can see that each one of them goes at a different speed. The only one that seems to go at full speed is the one where there's powered rail the whole way. And you can see as they go up, the one every time one of these others meets a spot with no powered rail, it slows down noticeably. So you're pretty much going to have to use powered rail the whole way up the slope when you're going uphill. Uh, some of the criticisms on my previous video were that... Uh, I was only testing unoccupied carts, and that's simply because it's hard to test occupied carts consistently uh, and to have enough space for it. But here is an easy place to do it. So with one, two, three, four, and five powered rail in a row, I'm going to jump in one of these and see how high I get. So with one, I get to uh, almost three. With uh, two powered rail, four and a half, not very far. Three powered rail, I get to five, six, four powered rail, how am I up to? Yeah, four powered rail, get up to four, five, six, seven, and then the last one, five powered rail, five, almost to nine. So, made it pretty far. Um, so you definitely get a lot more momentum if you're pushing an occupied cart, but you're still not flying up a mountainside. And then when I jump out, um, let's see on this next cycle, an unoccupied cart, instead of making it up to nine, makes it up to four. So it makes a huge difference in how far you get. So let's turn to a practical application of that. The fact that occupied minecarts get a lot more momentum than unoccupied means you can potentially do a runaway cart detector. That is a system that sorts unoccupied carts from occupied carts. That's what I have here. One powered rail and then a little slope and then an unoccupied cart doesn't have enough momentum to make it over this little slope and so it falls back and goes out along the black wool and that was your the, the way that your unoccupied carts go. And if I jump in instead I have enough momentum to make it over that slope. I end up going kind of slow. Uh, one powered rail wasn't very much, so with uh, with two powered rail, I keep pretty much full speed the whole way through as a passenger, which is what you want. You don't want to slow down the passenger for something like this. And then the unpowered or the unoccupied cart doesn't make it over and settles in there. Uh, by the way, anyone who's trying to build this, sometimes, and this is the weirdest thing, sometimes I had to put a torch underneath this turn to get it to go in the correct direction. There's all sorts of weird bugs with how powered rail turns other rails. Uh, so if you try to replicate this, keep in mind you might need to throw a torch under there. Now, there is a major flaw with this. And that is that the amount of momentum you have coming into the system does matter. Uh, this is an identical setup to the previous one, except I have a long ramp leading to it. You can see this time the unoccupied cart has enough momentum to make it over the ramp. Now this, uh, uh, some people have claimed that when you uh, hit a powered rail, you, the, the powered rail will reset your momentum. And if that were the case, then we would get the same results every time, right? Uh, 
whether we had a long ramp leading into it or not. But the fact that there's a long ramp coming in, and the minecart hits this with a lot of momentum, it's able to make it over the top of this, uh, this hill. So it couldn't be resetting your momentum. So this is an effective cart sorter, but you have to make sure you don't have too much momentum coming in. So it's pretty much only useful at the start of a minecart system. There are ways to reset your, mine, your uh, momentum, but those throw the occupant around a bit, and I, I think it's not a very pleasant experience for a rider. What I like about these is that a normal rider simply gets to go over a little hill, and they don't really notice anything else. Moving on, this is a, uh, a suggestion that a few different people had. Uh, this is a booster cart and then a long flat section and then this is a booster cart powered by powered rails people wanted to see what the difference was between these two and if you got an extra boost so side by side if we throw an unoccupied cart into each well the results are almost exactly the same you can see that the one the booster cart that had powered rail to push it went slightly farther than the one without powered rail. And I think the difference there is simply that the powered rail makes the booster cart come up to speed a little bit faster, so you get a tiny, quicker response, and so you get a little bit more speed coming out. But using powered rail to push your booster doesn't get you a bigger boost. There's better ways to get a bigger boost out of a booster cart by doing double, triple carts, and, and other arrangements. Okay, last experiment. I'm not going to make you wait through all of this, but this was to figure out how frequently you need to place your powered rail on a flat section in order to keep your top speed. So I arranged it so that I have powered rail on a slope and then a lever that I can pull that launches you. And in this case, I have 25 unpowered rails between each powered rail. And I jumped in, put a stopwatch app on my phone, and timed from the time I pulled that lever going around the end to the end of this line and you can see that each of these lines are the exact same length uh, how long it took for me to reach the end and I would hit the stop watch at the end and record the time and because that involves a little human error I repeated it three times each time took the average and the result here I had 15.37 seconds to go, do a full lap with 25 rails between each powered rail uh, if I reduce that slightly 24 rails. The average came out pretty much the same. It was slightly lower, but I think that was actually just uh, uh, I was a little bit trigger happy that time because when I went up to 26 rails, the average also went down slightly. So these are all well within the margin of error. So whether it's 25, 24, or 26, you get about the same amount of time. So I brought it all the way up to 32 rails between each powered rail. And when I ran this experiment, here's a really interesting part the time went up by about a quarter second consistently and this one is a noticeable difference um, and this is really good news because yes you are starting to lose momentum slightly before you reach the next powered rail but that loss of momentum is so slight on flat ground that you really don't notice a difference that means that as long as you place your powered rail around every 30 uh, spaces, you're going to get there in about the same amount of time. You're not going to be able to notice a quarter second difference over that long of distance, and unless you're racing, in which case put powered rail everywhere. So uh, 32 if you want to, 30 or so if you want to keep top speed. So that's more minecart science. Uh, please post your questions if you have any ideas for more, but I have lots of other ideas that I want to do. Science is fun, but there's also the practical application, so I think that's what you'll be seeing in my next one with a powered um, rail minecart station. Thanks for watching.